back to Mystical Sisterhood. This is your host, Maureen Spielman, and today I am here on another solo episode called How to Be in the Not Knowing. I always say these are as much for me as they are for you. So I think the things that we're attracted to in our lives are part of what we need to learn. Um, today, I decided to switch away from what I was going to originally talk about and follow where I was being guided. I've been going through a lot um, on a few different levels with a close friend, and there's a lot surfacing in my heart, my emotions, my mind, and on the soul level. A lot of questions I have and ways of being that I continue to try to be with and, and um, grow with. So I knew last week that I didn't have a guest lined up. And so I thought, okay, there's going to be a solo episode. And based on what I had going on in my life, I was thinking of the topic choosing between or the choice that we have between love and fear. But it didn't feel quite right. And I got to Monday morning and I thought, what am I going to talk about? And so I did a practice, which I often do which call it meditation, call it getting still. But I sat, uh, turned my timer on for 15 minutes and asked the question, what am I meant to know here? And what am I meant to share or talk about today? And what really came up strongly was how comfortable are we when we don't know and when we are in what I'm calling the not knowing. So I was really thankful that that came to me and spent the morning, you know, putting it together and try to figure out what I was going to say. So I think this is about learning to be in the not knowing because we are so conditioned to do that it's really truly a relearning how to be, which I believe is a relearning because we came in knowing how to be and then we were conditioned away from it. But I really thought that this could be um, a good topic because a lot of us find ourselves in the not knowing all the time. We might be faced with a um, some outer experience or challenge either we're having or a person close to us is having. And that could be like a really close friend, our partner, or a child. And I just want to be with you and say it can feel really really hard and to be seen in how that can feel and on the human level and the emotional level it's real it's real and to be seen in that is super important um and I think it's we don't have a road map right and every situation is different so when we come to to something in our lives that feels challenging for us. Partly it's because we don't know what's next. We don't know what's going to come. And I, and I was thinking about it and thinking, well, what are we uncomfortable with? Are we uncomfortable with the not knowing or, and it can be both. I'm just asking the question, are we uncomfortable with the emotions that are coming to us around it? And, and I think, I know for myself, like for so much of my life, I kind of push down the emotions that it's really like sort of like this renaissance of, of being with the emotions, learning to be with the emotions, learning to feel how they feel in my body um, and all of these things. So just to name, you know, a few outer world things I've seen people going through and, you know, maybe not having an answer to. And that being part of the not knowing that can feel frustrating is um, are people that may be either going through a medical crisis, something that is really big and not, not knowing necessarily what's to come, how to navigate it. Um, it can really, if we're just looking at it in one way, take us under a tidal wave. And I've seen that happen too with those going through ongoing, sort of like what seem like more chronic conditions medically. And that can be really trying and challenging too, because you may be in the case where you're doing what you can to heal it or integrate what your, your past into your present. 
yet it still presents. And so that's, that's a way that um, the not knowing what's to come can be really frustrating. I think an example of one I've seen a lot too in recent years, especially since COVID, and I have to believe it's because also what our kids are going through, all the pressures that they have and the race for their attention with their phones and any sort of tech um, is, I'm going to call it a mental health crisis or an emotional health crisis, however you name it. Um, I just feel like it's really, really, really difficult to see our children go through challenges and also for us as parents to experience the feelings and emotions that come along with that because the truth is we never know we never know what's next and so we can only do what we know how to do and learn or relearn what we've forgotten to do in these circumstances and we'll kind of talk about that as we weave in you know um the conversation today but i think that when we have, or I know from my experience, when there's something with a child, a lot of fear and anxiety can come up around it. So I'm sort of naming different sort of, I'm gonna just call them feeling states or emotional states that can come up around, whether it's frustration, anger, sadness, um, fear, anxiety, uh, all sorts of things, anger that comes up. So that come up in the not knowing um, for us. There's also a midlife crisis um, where we are coming to midlife and thinking like, what's my purpose and what's next for me? And then not knowing and feeling like time is time is going by and, and you can't possibly like, quote unquote, figure it out soon enough. And that can be very frustrating. I feel like I went through a lot of that in my 40s, for sure. Um, and then I can't believe I didn't put this one first, but a relationship, relationship, not knowing perhaps being in a short-term or a long-term relationship and not knowing it can be a really uncomfortable place um, because we're so conditioned to find the answer, be hard on ourselves for the not knowing, um, look to fix or change a situation instead of knowing it might be here for us in our learning. And, but I want to name, I wanted to first name because for most of us, it is our experience that these things can feel tiring and exhausting. And it's so understandable that, 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 um, that they do feel that way because they can feel bigger than life when we forget that we're part of it and we're creators within it. Um, so for you, you know, just posing that question to you, what comes up for you when you don't know what's next? What emotions or feeling states come to you that you either sit with or don't? And there's no right or wrong in that. But how is it that that shows up for you when you don't know? Um, I feel like for me, I, I'm, I'm, I am kind of between both worlds because if you've been listening for a while, you know that I'm a believer that we're having this human experience, right? And, uh, and, and we were souls that we have souls within us and we're having the human experience. So there's the both and there's the we're held by the benevolent universe and how is this for me? But there's also the truth in navigating um, our path and path with our loved ones within ourselves. So sort of doing this dance between both sides and we're learning how to be with both of them. Um, so that's what happens to me when there's something big in my outer world. These days, I find myself like straddling between the two of the soul and then the human experience. And I think that an intention I have for myself, because I think that the um, the soul side has such softness to it, is that I I intend to come to that side first for myself, and then I can be with the human parts too. Um, my soul seems to know there's something bigger at play in a lot of situations. And, and, and I think when I'm in that space, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I can trust, but my mind and my ego, I'll call it desperately wants to fix the situation to make it better. Like I said before, to make it go away. 
and it's so understandable it would because it seems like it would be so much easier and and on many levels it is it would be right if we didn't have to um have the challenges that we do so um i said about the friendly universe i was just rereading parts of conversations with god by neil donald walsh and in it he says the way to reduce the pain you associate with earth experiences and events, both yours and others, is to change the way you behold them. So when they come into our world, being able to sit with them as to not judge them, the experiences, but to know that they're here to for us to remember our truth, remember our light, that which we lost long ago because this lifetime is about discernment right like the what we want more of and and what we want to experience less of but it's all that path back to home back to our knowing back to our truth back to our light and you are in the process of rediscovering i believe if you're listening to this and you're listening to either me or any of my guests you are on that process of remembering and changing your inner experience of the outer experience. Um, I know I get a little, I think, misaligned or what feels like off center when I'm so much in 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 the other side of it, like the the ego, the human mind, the fix it. Um, I think I'm looking at it as um, wanting wanting to have um, this is understandable, a less painful or pain free experience. But I think we're all reminded that life isn't pain-free. And if we're here to remember who we are, then we're going to experience a wide range of experiences. And my need to fix it is a product of thinking it's wrong to begin with. Um, so yeah, another turning point for me, and I think that in the book, the Neil Donald Walsh book, it helped me remember, is when there's something an outer event happening, if it's an illness or a child or a relationship. And this was one that I didn't start learning until about three years ago, was that I'm not a victim to those circumstances, but I'm a creator of what I'm seeking to experience and redefine as my experience, as opposed to whatever my experience was in my childhood. Um, because I think traditionally the not knowing for me could feel like a helpless place and circumstances can feel so much bigger than us, but it's getting quiet. It's getting in the being, it's getting in the stillness and going inward that helps me feel more of the knowing, um, the finding my answers, just like I did when I started out today, like what's my answer, what's here for me to share today? And the answer that came was to talk about the not knowing and how uncomfortable it can be and how to be with our emotions and sit with them. Um, so learning to be with what comes versus thinking that I need to do as well. I love how Michael Brown of the presence process says, this is, this is a good one. The only way out is through and the only way through is in. Cause I always heard the only way out is through but I never really was hearing them. The only way through is in, inward. So is there an emotion or information that can come up for us in the not knowing? Because the not knowing is how something appears, the frustration and the emotions that come. And the question of where can you turn when you don't know? And although we've been conditioned to think that the not knowing is uncomfortable, and I said this in the beginning, but I'll say it again, perhaps it's because sitting with the emotion that come up, that comes up. So the emotions that come up with the not knowing is the part that's uncomfortable. So I believe that, and the more I work with myself and I work with individuals is that we have the richness within us and it's the peeling back of the layers and shedding of the conditioning that allows us to get to the heart of the matter. So I'll just go for a few ways that I do this and a few more points um, to reference if it's a process that you're curious about. 
And I may have said this in my other solo episodes, but it's the process of going inward. So I think it's what I'm seeing more and more is how important it is to make intentional room for yourself. We all lead busy lives and it's really hard to find the time to go within, but I encourage you to find that space and time every day whether it's the first thing you wake up in the morning at 5.30, 6.30, 7.30, or you know, if you get to take a break in the afternoon, and if not, in the evening. But making that intentional room for yourself, knowing that your soul connection and going within for your answers is nothing is more important. Um, your soul is always guiding you. Uh, I know one way that I avoid making the room for myself is to really fall back on that old busyness. And uh, I know you guys, so many can relate is, is, um, distracting. I, I work out of my home. So geez, there's always a dishwasher to be emptied or some food to be eaten or, um, just something that keeps me from sitting and being still. And, this morning I did it with my 15 minutes and I don't even think I made it through the 15 minutes, but I got a lot of gold when I was there. But I think that when we go to the question of how does the discomfort in the not knowing show up for us when we don't know is knowing that there's a message to listen to in any and all emotions, feelings, experiences that come to you. That's, that's the inner richness. That's your emotional intellect. Um, I actually saw, I was up in Madison, Wisconsin yesterday, and I think I saw a therapeutic place, um, like a counseling center. And it was called, it was actually called the gift of emotions. And I usually don't see that on a therapeutic, um, center. And I thought it was really beautiful because it was just so there for you. Like, let's talk about it. Let's, let's unwrap the gift of the emotions. They're here to guide us and bring us back, um, and to go within and ask. So if you feel the emotions, the first part is to feel them. Where do they surface in your body? And, and just be with them and breathe with them. And, you know, often, I'm not sure about you, but for emotions for me, especially if there's a tough outer circumstance, I can feel them, right? They're, they're, they're right there. They're right on the surface. And so this morning I looked up a yoga playlist because Music is one way that I use um, to move emotions. And I was really intentional about it today because I knew that there were some to move. And so, you, hey, we all know the music that can allow our tears to flow and our emotions to come, even if it's anger to come out. There's music for that too. It's really important. But when the emotions come to you, if you can sit and ask them, what are you here to tell me? What are you here to tell me? And I think, quite simply in my not knowing of my outer circumstance, I was being caught in the doing. And then I pull myself into the being and into the sitting and into the feeling, and then into the inquiring and the compassion of what are you here to tell me? Um, Is there a need here that I have that I have forgotten? And is it, is it that in this case, Maureen needs solace. Maureen needs compassion. Maureen, because we forget often to include ourselves in the equation when we're dealing with the outer world. Of course, you know, it's like, who me? But I, I believe we are all reawakening to this together. And we are finding that nothing is more important. So what do you need at the moment? Um, is it compassionate language, the language of understanding? I see you, I hear you, that inner dialogue for yourself, not for the other, for yourself, someone to hold your hand and even um, just a reparenting. And that's a whole nother episode of coming back to ourselves and remothering and reparenting and repairing what we didn't get in our childhoods. Cause often most likely the emotions coming out for us are reminiscent of something from our past. And I'll ask you, what is the truth um, that is here for you to remember? The not knowing may be here for you to rediscover and recreate who it is you are becoming. And I bet when you sit with it, you will remember a lot more than you give yourself credit for.
because we can't, can't always get to the answers if we're not quiet with ourselves, if we're not inquiring with ourselves. Um, I'd say committing to hearing yourself and that what is inside of you and uncovering the answers help you heal. And in turn, you will be able to give, um, I think more freely, more fluidly, more in flow to others on the outer world when you learn to be with yourself in the inner world and go to your needs uh, first and foremost. And then I think an important part for me, um, and, and let me know if what you think I'm missing today, but is to lean into your safe and trustworthy relationships. So allow yourself even as you're kind of being with whatever your outer situation or challenge or experience is, lean into the safe and trustworthy places. Um, reach out if you're looking to find what that might be for you, and maybe we can think of ideas. But I don't know today if this question of how can we be with the not knowing or being with the not knowing supports you at all, but it's meant to be a moving from whatever you're experiencing on the outside to bring it into your own inner process and experience. And it will help you, I believe, navigate both the little stuff and the big stuff. And learning that in our being, we can find answers sometimes a lot faster than we can in our doing. And pair it with your doing, but make sure you're doing the being. <laughs> or being the being. Um, thanks for listening today as always. I appreciate it. If you haven't left a review, Apple is the platform where reviews are co collected. And I'd be so grateful if you popped on there for a moment to give it a rating and a review. It helps the work become more exponential. Um, and if you wanna reach out and continue the conversation, you can email me at hello at maureenspielman.com. I'm all about transforming any older paradigms into newer paradigms. It's a huge love of mine and for both personal and professional and just getting goodness out into the universe. We're all needed for that. In the Mystical Sisterhood membership, like I always say, we discuss um, topics in this really soul-centric way. Um, and we're, I'm always committed within that forum and platform to conscious conversations. So I plan to put it together a few workshops for the fall. So take a look at my website soon. That's at maureenspielman.com and you'll find mysticalsisterhood.com connected there. Um, but many, many thanks for being here. I hope this assists you in some way, even if there's one sentence in here or one quote or anything that you can take out into your world and share with somebody. One is a million, as they say. And that's it. So I will see you on the next episode with our next guest. And stay well. Thanks for listening to this episode of Mystical Sisterhood. To learn more about my one-on-one -on -one coaching programs or join the Mystical Sisterhood membership, visit MaureenSpielman.com or MysticalSisterhood.com. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next episode.